Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with School of Motion. And in this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use five free tools in After Effects. Now, all of these tools are fantastic resources for any After Effects artist. But at the end of the day, these tools were created by a developer. So if you're feeling generous, even though they're free, you know, feel free to donate some money towards their causes. They are doing fantastic work and they definitely deserve it. So let's get started with the very first free tool. Now, like all the tutorials here at School of Motion, the project files are completely free. All you have to do is just click the download link. Uh, you'll find a link in the description of this video. So the first tool that I wanna to talk to you about is, uh, well, I gotta admit, it's kind of a funny name. It's called Butt Capper. And you know, you know how whenever you're working with a shape layer in After Effects and you need to cap those butts? Well, normally, uh, let's say we have this design right here and this is a shape layer. And let's say we wanted these edges to be harsh right here. We don't want them to have rounded butts. Come on, be mature here, people. Uh, so if we wanted to normally do that, you'd have to go down here to the drop down menu. You'd have to go to contents, go to the shape. You would have to find the stroke and then you would go over here to uh, the line cap and you would change it to a butt cap or a round cap or a projecting cap. Now, this is not necessarily a terrible way to do this, but if you work with a lot of shape layers and if you're an After Effects artist and specifically if you're on School of Motion, there's a great chance that you do a lot of shape layer work. This is not ideal. So the best thing that you can do is download this free tool called Butt Capper and it's up here in the top right panel here. So to use butt capper, all you have to do is select your shape layer and then you can just go to window and run the butt capper script there and it'll pop up this little panel and so you can just select, uh, you know, whichever butt style you like the best. All right, so let's move on to the next tool. So the next free tool that I wanna to talk about is the Redefinery script set. So this is actually 51 different scripts for After Effects and every single one of them are free. Now, obviously I'm not gonna show you how to use all 51, but I wanted to show you just a few of the different scripts in that pack so you can get an idea of kind of what utility task these different scripts can do for your project. One of my favorite scripts inside of this script set is called the Comp Setter. So uh, the Comp Setter basically allows you to change the duration of your composition and it will automatically change your pre-comps and your layers in your timeline to match the new duration. So that's important because typically, so let's, let's take a look at our composition here. We have a one second composition. So let's say we wanted to adjust it to be a 10 second composition. So typically you'd go to composition, composition settings, and we could change this duration from a one second to 10 seconds and hit okay. But if you zoom out here, you'll see that all of your layers are only at one second. So it's usually not that big of a deal to go in and we can select all of them and then we can extend them out here. It's, a, it's annoying, but you know, it gets the job done. But the problem is if you wanna adjust a pre-comp, you can't do it. You have to then go back in and adjust the duration of all your compositions inside of your composition and it can be a real pain. So Comp Setter actually fixes this. So what we can do is we can just go to File, scripts and we're gonna run our comp setter script here and we will make sure the width and height is set to 1920 by 1080. All of these other uh, parameters here will just remain at default unless you change them and then the duration we're gonna change to, we can do 15 seconds and we'll make sure seconds is selected right there. All these other settings are fine and we will go ahead and hit apply. So it doesn't look like a lot changed, but it actually did quite a bit in just a few seconds there. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out here. So if you zoom out, you'll see that all of our layers are now set to 15 seconds long. And if we scrub through, we can see that our um, composition will automatically update and our light orb will just kind of spin around beyond the one second mark. So we can go ahead and preview this and see what I'm talking about. All right, so there you go, our composition was automatically adjusted. We didn't have to go in and adjust all the pre-comps and layers and things like that in only a matter of clicks. So the next tool that I wanna talk about in this script set is the mask to shape script. Now, it does exactly what the name implies. It'll convert your mask to shapes, but practically speaking, that's really important because sometimes you may create a solid and make a shape real quick and not expecting to have to use all the shape modifiers, but what happens when you wanna do something like use a repeater to a shape layer. What do you do? Well, 
you would probably have to use either some sort of effect or some sort of script to make the repeater work well, and it's just kind of a pain. So the best thing to do is to use the script to convert your mask paths into shapes. So I'll show you how it's done. So right now we have a white solid right here, and this is just a white solid with a mask that has been cut out. So what we can do is run the mask to shape script. So I'll go ahead and go down to scripts here and we will find mask to shape and it will convert our solid. It won't get rid of the solid. So the solid is still there, but it will convert that solid into a shape and put that shape into the timeline. So right now you can't see anything because the shape does not have a fill applied to it. So we'll just go to add and then fill and then we can change the fill to white to match the solid that we had before. So now we can do exactly what I was talking about earlier. We can actually add a repeater to the shape and we can just go here to add and go to repeater. And then we can adjust the transform of the repeater. Let's adjust the position here and then we can make the copies, let's say five. And there you go, we're already starting to get a pretty cool design and it all started with a solid layer instead of a shape layer. So this is a really powerful tool if you do a lot of design in After Effects. So let's say you're working late on a project, you're getting kind of sleepy, and you notice something that needs to be changed, but you don't have time to get to it right now. Well, wouldn't it be helpful if you could just add a quick note in After Effects that will tell you what you need to do whenever you hop back on the computer next time? Or wouldn't it be super cool if you could like leave notes for other people if they get into your After Effects project? It would be cool. I'm going to go ahead and answer that question for you. Uh, and you can do that with another cool script in the Redefinery script set called Notation. So if you just go to File Scripts and then we can find Notation here, you can see that we can go in and we can add notes. Directly in the After Effects timeline and when the next user opens up after Effects, they can access these notations. So it's a really handy tool if you work in a team environment or if you uh, find yourself forgetting things very easily. And if you're anything like me, then you probably do. And so it's a great tool um, for adding feedback to your projects. So let's move on to the next tool. Our next tool is not only free, it's also one of the most useful tools in all of After Effects. It's called Duic, and Duic is a character rigging tool that makes the character animation process a lot easier. If you're not already familiar with School of Motion, we actually have a character animation bootcamp and a rigging academy that uses Duic in the workflows. So I'm gonna show you how to use this tool just kind of on a basic level. And if you wanna learn more, go check out those boot camps over at School of Motion. So right now we kind of have this robotic arm and let's say we wanna do an animation to make it look like this robotic arm is working on this crazy looking box here. So what I've gone in and done is I created individual layers for each of the arm components and then I've moved the anchor point to the center where it needs to pivot. And so you can move the anchor point by just using the pan behind tool. So by default, it's usually about there in the middle. And so you can just click it and drag it to right in the middle of the pivot point where it needs to be. And so what I'm gonna do here is I wanna make sure that all of our appendages are linked up together in the correct order. So we want our forearm, so the furthest extremity, to be connected to the next extremity and parented to the next extremity. So I'm gonna connect our forearm and use the parent uh, pick whip tool here to parent it to the arm, so this secondary arm here, and then I'm going to parent the arm to the leg. I don't know, it's not technically a leg, but I don't know what you would call an arm that's connected to another arm, like a super arm or something like that. So now we have all of our arms connected to each other. So now, I want to rig it to where when we adjust just this last arm right here, it will actually adjust all of these other arms to match. So in order to do that, we need to create a controller. So I'm gonna select the forearm here and I'm gonna to go to our Duic plugin here and you can activate Duic by going to window and then finding Duic right there. And I'm going to select controllers and we can just go ahead and click create. You can adjust the size and the color and all that stuff. It's gonna create a red one by default, but that's fine. And so we're gonna create a default controller and you'll see that the very center of the controller has automatically been applied to the very center of that anchor point. So because we had our forearm selected, that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So let's go ahead and we're gonna select our forearm, our arm, our leg, and then we're gonna select our forearm controller. And it's important that you select it in that order. So it needs to be uh, the furthest 
extremity, the next one, the next one, and then your controller. And then we're gonna go to IK, which stands for inverse kinematics. And that is an important tool in uh, all of character animation because it allows your elbows to bend correctly. And so uh, we're gonna make sure we have that selected. And this is a two layer IK and a goal. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit create. So nothing happened right off the bat, but this is incredible. This is where the magic happens. So now we can actually adjust our controller here and you'll see that all of the other layers bend in a natural way. So we can kind of animate this robot here. We can even rotate this robot arm and it will animate just like a robot. So uh, the same could be used for an actual character. You can rig all sorts of different things, maybe a tail, maybe uh, some sort of monster claw thing, you could use this tool uh, for that. But even beyond just rigging up individual hands, there's an incredible tool in Duik called the Auto Rig. So the way the Auto Rig works is if you have created your character in Photoshop or Illustrator, you can import them into After Effects, or I suppose you can build them directly in After Effects. And you can have Duik automatically rig your character without you having to go in and rig all the arms individually like we just did in the last composition. So I have my character right here and I've gone in and adjusted all the anchor points so that they are in the correct place. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all of my layers here for this character and hit auto rig. And because this is a human robot, you know, it's walking on two hands, we're gonna do a plantigrade and we're gonna go ahead and click full character. So I'm gonna do a bit of a time lapse here to set up all of my layers, but at the tail end of it, you'll see that everything is rigged correctly. And look at it go, it's creating a rig. All right, so our robot is rigged up here, so we can actually go in and you'll see all these controllers have been created and we can adjust these controllers and we will have uh, a very easy time animating this robot. And so all of these controllers can be adjusted and you can see our robots like, dancing here. And one thing you may have to change, so this elbow right here, if we kind of adjust it, you can see it's bending in the wrong direction. So all of the controllers that were created here, if you go to your effects controls, you'll have some further customization that you can do. And all we have to do is uh, select this uh, IK left forearm uh, clockwise checkbox there, and it will get the inverse kinematics correctly for that hand. So again, like before, we can adjust the hand uh, to the correct uh, orientation and then we can adjust it like this and the elbow uh, will automatically uh, adjust to where we need it. So so yeah, this is a really, really handy and helpful tool for any uh, character animation work. And you know, if you're doing walk cycles or creating cartoons in After Effects, it is an indispensable tool. Now, if you're watching this tutorial, then chances are you're a fan of Video Copilot and rightfully so, we are too. But one of the most incredible things that Video Copilot does again and again and again is they create free tools for the community. And one of the coolest tools that has come out in the last few years is the Effects Console. Effects Console is a keyboard driven search console. So what that means is instead of having, let's say we wanted to add a glow effect to this HUD element right here. So instead of having to go to the effects browser, find glow, drag it over, or you could double click and apply it, so this process of dragging and dropping effects can get kind of annoying. So instead, with effects consoles, you can apply effects without ever leaving your keyboard. So your fingers stay on the keys. And if you know anything about video editing or motion work, the easier it is for you to keep your hands on the keyboard, the faster your work will be. So I have effects console mapped to control and space on my computer, but you can map it to any sequence of keys that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. And then all we have to do is type in glow and hit enter and you'll see that the glow effect was applied. And then let's say if we wanted to add noise, you can just type in noise. And if we wanted to add fractal noise, you can do that too. And all you have to do is hit enter and it'll apply. So in, you know, five seconds, we've already applied three different effects. And, you know, maybe that would have taken you 10 or 15 seconds before. Uh, but seconds saved here, or there can definitely add up when you're working on motion design work. So if that was the only thing the effects console did, it would still be an incredibly useful tool in After Effects, but it goes even further. So 
Uh, one of the coolest things you can do with effects console is save your favorite effects. So, you know, you probably use certain effects over and over again. For me, I use fractal noise all the time. So let's say that I want to make getting fractal noise even easier than popping up the search bar and typing in fractal noise. So what you can do is you can call up the effects console and I'm gonna type in fractal noise. Now, before I click on it, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create a shortcut. And what it has just done is created a number shortcut that I can use to recall fractal noise in the future. So if I pop it up here, you'll see FRA, that stands for fractal. And so all I have to do is hit the number three key and it applied fractal noise to our layer there. Pretty cool, right? And the cool thing is you can even go into your settings and adjust which effect is mapped to what number. And you can also get rid of them or add more effects. In fact, this entire panel is very useful. I'm not gonna get into all of the details about what it can do, but there is a great tutorial over on Video Copilot if you're interested. So the effects console is already super useful, but it goes even further. So let's say you wanted to save a screenshot and send it off to a client. How would you do that? Well, typically you would have to save a frame, right? So you'd go to composition, save frame as, file, you'd export it as a JPEG or a PNG, and then send it to your client. It's fine, but it's kind of annoying, right? But with the effects console, you can actually take screenshots directly in After Effects without having to go to the render queue at all. It's super, super cool. So all you have to do is hit this little screenshot button here and it'll take a screenshot. And then all you have to do is click on the open gallery button to view all of your screenshots. So this is really useful for a number of different things. So the first is exactly what I was saying. All you have to do is you can right click and you can save to a PNG and there you go. It'll save to your computer and you can send it off to your clients or other collaborators. Uh, you can also copy to the clipboard, which is really handy because that means you can basically just copy and paste it into anything. It could be a Word doc, it could be Photoshop, Illustrator, it could be anything. But having the ability to copy a screenshot directly in After Effects to the clipboard is an incredibly powerful feature. But another way that you could use it is through taking screenshots for iterations of your project. So let's say, you know, we created three different versions of this project here and we wanna see which one's our favorite. Well, you can click through right here or you can hold down shift and click arrow down and you can compare them all side by side just like that. So it's a super handy tool um, that you can use and I use it all the dang time to share screenshots, to save things uh, and it's an, just an incredibly useful feature. So let's move on to our very last free tool in After Effects. So if you're watching this tutorial, there's probably about an 80% chance that you are a Creative Cloud subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber to the Creative Cloud, you're really missing out on a lot of great product updates and a lot of really cool features. But one of my favorite features that people tend to not use as much as they should is the Creative Cloud Library feature. So Creative Cloud Libraries basically work kind of like Dropbox or Google Drive. It allows you to save assets and resources to a cloud and you can access those assets and resources in Adobe application. So for example, I have the libraries panel popped up right here. And if you don't see it, you can just go to window libraries and it'll pop up right there. And you can see here that I have some colors from a color palette that I created for this project selected. And I also have a logo and a background image. And I also have some character styles here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these actually. And I'm gonna show you how I put those there and how you can access them for your After Effects project. So I'm gonna use Photoshop, but you can use Illustrator um, to generate assets for your creative cloud libraries as well. So I'm gonna hop over to Photoshop real quick. So let's say that we're inside of Photoshop and we've just got done creating the first board for our project. And we have a color palette that we've generated. We have a character style and then we have uh, some assets that we want to include inside of our project. So to add them to your library, all you have to do is we'll start with the color palette here. I'm gonna hit I for the eyedropper and I'm gonna select white right there, that white lighter color. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus uh, button here and I'm gonna select just the foreground color and we're gonna add it to our library. We're gonna select the next color there and just repeat this process for all of the colors in our color palette. And then of course, you know, we are adding this just into the My Library section, but you can move this um, into any new library or folder that you want. It just depends on the project. But for right now, we'll just uh, put these in our root uh, folder here. And then I'll select this last color here 
and hit add. And let's say that we want to add in the text here. All you have to do is select the text, hit the plus uh, button there, and then we can just select the character style and add that uh, to our project here. So let's say that we want to save this background and drag and drop it into our other applications just for reference. So uh, if you wanna do that, it's really easy. All you have to do is select the background layer, hit the plus button, and we'll just import this as a graphic into our library and you'll see that it's down there. And then what makes this super special is you can actually use logos in the same way. So if you're working on a project that has consistent branding, you can drag and drop logos and it's super easy. So I'm just gonna call up our logo here. It's just a real simple logo. Um, we'll call this School of Motion logo. And I am gonna make sure it's selected here. I'm gonna hit the plus key and we'll import the graphic and it'll import as a PNG and you'll see that there's the School of Motion logo. So the cool thing is when we go over here to After Effects, all of the assets will be imported into your project and it will automatically update if you add any new assets to your project. So let's say that you wanted to add this School of Motion logo into your project. All you have to do is drag and drop it right into the composition and it will pop up right there. So we can just drop it in there, scale it down a bit, move it over. We can even uh, maybe Use the pen tool here to, to mask out just the triangle part here, just like that. And you know, we could even use the colors here to change, let's say the box. So we have the box shape right here. Let's say we wanna change the stroke color. We can select the stroke and you can actually use this eyedropper here to just grab the colors directly from uh, the color swatches right here in the libraries panel. We can go ahead and hit OK and then, you know, obviously the opacity's turned down on that a bit, but if we turn up the opacity, you'll see that the greens match perfectly. All right, and that's about it. If you want to download these freebies, go check out the PDF over on our website. We have a list of all of the freebies and a link directly to the download. And then we also have an entire article that gets into even more detail about how to use each one of these tools. And again, if you want to learn more about After Effects, go check out the other tutorials over at School of Motion. And if you're interested in getting into character animation, animation, design, go check out the boot camps over at School of Motion. They're a fantastic resource for anyone looking to up their motion design skills. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.